When I first saw the movie 2001, I was amazed, awed to say the least. The entire scope of the movie was overpowering, and for most of the people of the world, was completely baffling. Most people who saw that movie did not understand from beginning to end what it was that they had experienced, but they knew, everyone who saw it, knew that they had experienced something profound. That something had been communicated to the dark, deep recesses of their mind, which they did not understand, and indeed, which they were incapable of understanding. For you see, the movie was not meant for the profane, as most of us are called, by the adepts or the initiates or the priests of the mystery schools. For that movie was a message to those initiates who were well versed in the symbology and the mystery religion of an ancient religion that is practiced to this day in secret. Bill Cooper's now famous explanation of the occult symbolism embedded within Kubrick's celebrated cinematic masterpiece, 2001 A Space Odyssey, is an absolutely fascinating revelation. The manner by which he reveals how this pivotal film essentially outlines the entirety of the Luciferian belief system is nothing short of astounding. Now, if you are familiar with this exposition, indeed with this broader concept of how the esoteric symbolism used by the so-called illumined ones can be encoded within a narrative that is shown to the unsuspecting masses, I would like for you to consider something. Consider this same underlying concept, only expanded exponentially beyond a singular film beyond all Hollywood films and television put together beyond the scope of even the 20th and 21st centuries consider this idea of Babylonian mysticism being written into the fabric of a technologically themed mythology as something which permeates virtually every facet of modern society for indeed, mythology has long been a preferred vehicle of transmitting and cloaking such ancient Gnostic teachings, the stories and characters involved serving as archetypes for deeper esoteric themes and shadowy spiritual personalities. The fallen angels who rebelled with Lucifer and fell to earth have had their exploits and praises told and retold through countless ancient legends and mystical traditions, being regarded by the majority as nothing more than fictional myths and fairy tales but regarded by the initiated as ancient truths and keys to the eventual fulfillment of that ancient Luciferian promise, ye shall be as gods. And truly this quest for the evolution into godhood has never died out. It has in fact only increased in fervor and resolve, being led through the centuries by these invisible entities who claim to lead the way to ascension, to enlightenment. We live in a world where the vast majority of people sincerely believe evolution to be a scientifically established fact, completely oblivious to the fact that this idea of the universe springing forth from an infinitely compacted singularity is one that traces back into the bowels of Greek Gnosticism, Eastern mysticism, and Kabbalistic occultism. It is a central component of Luciferian cosmology, repackaged into simplified atheistic form fit for consumption by the unsuspecting masses. And so by the millions, blinded by the pseudoscientific veneer, humanity continues to look to the stars for answers, to gaze at the planets in lustful dreams of transcendent experience and boundless exploration, the guise of astronomy thinly veiling the enduring ancient practices of astrology. For what does astrology teach? about these planets, these spheres. 
These planets, these planes, these wandering stars, were regarded since ancient times by virtually every mystical tradition as embodying different realms, spheres of influence, or categories of dominion, both within the life of the individual and the group as a whole. The Bible refers to certain angelic beings in terms of powers and principalities, and indeed, this is exactly how I believe this can and should be understood. These various descriptions of planets or worlds being equated with areas of dominion on various spiritual planes, which are at the same time being equated with various pantheons of gods, and simultaneously also being equated with various chakras or power centers within the human body. The Kabbalistic Tree of Life claims to represent this same array of power centers or spheres and occult teachers such as the renowned Manly P. Hall openly connect the spheres of the Tree of Life to the planets and astrology as well. Th these are just different ways of trying to embody the same thing. This hierarchy of realms, if you will, all connected and all said to be in need of being held in proper balance. We see this again being represented in a slightly different way in the Kabbalistic depiction of the Ein Sof, the Ten Emanations of God, where hereby the, the term God is used in a rather pantheistic sense, and so each emanation corresponds to a different dimension of reality, all connected, and all again said to be in balance with one another. Now, quickly turn and contemplate this in comparison to the early conceptions of the solar system as imagined by men like Copernicus and Kepler. Prior to Newton's mathematical derivations, or divinations, of elliptical orbits, the planets were regarded as existing in a number of concentric rings. The eventual number of heavenly bodies being named by science, if we include the sun, ironically mirrors the number of emanations described by the Kabbalah. And so again, I return back to this question which so many people like to ask, in regards to the reason as to why the powers that shouldn't be would go to so much effort and expense to fake not just moon landings, but an entire cosmological framework which starts at the Big Bang and then pushes forward all the way to the apotheosis of man. Do you still not see it? Do we not see the fingerprints of the same Freemasonic occultism plastered all over NASA since the beginning? The same Gnostic mythology being alluded to again and again and again in the naming of not just the spacecraft and space missions, but in the naming of almost a, every alleged news discovery in the cosmos. Do we not realize that the reason for all of this ritualistic dissemination of symbolism is not merely to gain our subconscious approval or to drain our spiritual energy and so forth, no, I would say it with extreme conviction at this point, that the primary drive for embedding these ancient mystical concepts into a false narrative of scientific materialism is what Alice Bailey spoke about in the externalization of the hierarchy. It's the agenda of bringing this ancient Babylonian mystery school religion out of the shadows and into the mainstream. When Bill Cooper made his analysis of Kubrick's film, he spoke about it representing the ancient mystery religion practiced in secret, not meant for the profane. But I believe that now more than ever, we can see that the drive behind this massive scale cinematic event we call science is to in fact beckon us, the ignorant masses, the quote profane, towards despising our own excluded position and kindling a burning desire to obtain the same secret knowledge of cells. In short, this vast collection of modern mythology is all about bringing Luciferianism to the masses.